Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, after a week's hiatus to uh, Anime on Draft, Episode 9, super excited to, to be back and recording. Uh, we have uh, an extra long episode here for you today, as well as a special guest. But uh, first things first, let me introduce you to my co-host. As always, I'm joined by Rolando. What's up? As well as Alec. How's it going, everybody? Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, we do have a special guest joining us here today. Uh, it is uh, my buddy Kaku Show. Um, we've known each other for about, I'd say, like four or five years. Uh, big anime fan, uh, Twitch streamer, um, big into the speedrunning community and different things like that. But I'll go ahead and uh, introduce him now. So uh, say say hi, Kaku. What's up, guys? Uh, so uh, he goes by Kaku Show um, and some of his social media info- information um, that we'll also be linking um, on our WordPress. But uh, just so we have it now, it's at Kaku Show Life Zero, as well as twitch.tv slash Kaku Show. And that's spelled K-A-K-U-S-H-O. Uh, but from going forward, we'll probably and most people who do view his stream and stuff like that go by uh, call him Kaku. So that's probably how we'll uh, be referring to him uh going on um, Cock you. but yeah um super super happy to have you here my man uh, any first thoughts or impressions before we uh, get started uh, I'm, I'm way more nervous than i should be <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's why we're drinking right you know everybody, exactly every, everybody's friends here. Take, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it soon and, and you'll be like i'm not nervous at all i just gotta yeah. pee <laughs> All right, on. Let's uh, let me uh, jump right into it, and uh, we'll get introducing uh, what we're going to talk about today. So, um, the beer that we chose today, actually, uh, Kaku, go ahead and uh, he went ahead and recommended it. We're doing uh, the Trooper. It is an Iron Maiden style created beer, but it's done by a um, an English company named uh, Robinson's Brewery. So we'll be talking about that. Also, we're going to talk about um, the past two episodes of Attack on Titan, uh, very briefly segue into Soccer Quest, uh, and then finish up uh, with Arrow Manga. I know it's going to get a little bit heated in here because uh, we all have differing uh, opinions about that, so it should be, should be a good time, so uh, look forward to that. Um, but let's uh, let's go ahead and pour these bad boys, guys. Let's uh, let's get started with this trooper um, crafted or inspired by Iron Maiden, and again made by Robinson's Brewery out of Cheshire, England. That's right. That's right. Kind of um, cool. Kaku, I know you you picked it and kind of recommended it for us. What kind of stood out uh, for it for you? Um, Why did you the uh, skeleton guy with the flag? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because it, it's Iron Maiden, you know, this this beer is metal, of course. <laughs> um, but funnily enough, actually, I went to uh, BevMo and my friend's like, yo, pick this beer. It's good. And I'm like, why not? We'll do it. it it's actually it's actually really good. You know, um, as for uh, uh, an ale, it's it's really, really solid. Yeah, I, I uh, poured mine out. It's got a great color. Uh, what do you guys think about it, uh, Rolando? Yeah, it's got a. It's got a nice amber hue to it. Um, I I believe it smells like a like a British ale. Um, yeah. It also tastes it a lot like a British ale, but this one has a bit more um, a bit more of a of a hoppy taste yeah, than normal it does. for British. Uh, it has a little more bitteriness from the hops i've noticed as well but it smells like if you go to you're like oh i'm in a london pub this is like what i picture i would have in front of me (laughs) if if i if i did that yeah it kind of reminds me of the color of like a newcastle that's a more common known uh Mm -hmm. english style uh ale um so that's kind of what it reminds me of um yeah it smells really good though yeah I it like smell. It. it smells. It smells like an ale. I mean, there's nothing too distinct. I'm not getting any citrus or fruits or anything. Kind of maybe a little bit of wheat, a little bit of hops. Um, pretty decent uh, legs going up the side here. I don't know how how well you guys poured yours. The head retention on mine is really low. low. <laughs> um, I poured it out and it it disappeared so fast. The color on the head was nice while it was there, though. It was kind of a that cream color, and then it was like poof, gone. Um, but yeah, it, it's a, uh, it's you know they're they're sticking there on the side. That's for sure. The yeah, the yeah. foam legs are sticking there for a while, which is kind of nice, you know. 
if it were a lighter beer and they weren't sticking there, then it, when there's no head retention like that, it just ends up looking like a cup of piss. So <laughs> uh, we don't have that issue <laughs> with this one. So that's nice. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I just like suck at pouring or what, but like the head that I got on mine is like, it's been kicking for like five minutes right now. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's just, it's staying, it's in there, man. Yeah. Well, Did you have the, uh, the can or the bottle? I had the, uh, I have the bottle. Um, okay. That might be the difference. I have, I have a can. I, had, can I have the bottle. I, I poured okay. it like I normally pour more volatile beers. So, um, I didn't do my normal, you know, pour part way and then like finish it off dump straight it. and just dump it. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's probably why mine doesn't have too much, uh, too much head retention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I poured it like you did. Um, I was just pouring it and not thinking. So <clears throat> exactly. I probably sh- should have just dumped it. And I was like, always oh. try to be like gingerly cradle it, uh, as, uh, yeah. if it's a beer you've never had before, you never know it's going to like explode on you and overflow. Yeah. Or and I'm like used that. to pouring stouts. If you pour those too rough, it's like, it, <laughs> it explodes. <laughs> it just goes <laughs> everywhere. And I'm like, well, mm, it's a uh, 75% foam and 25% liquid. Cool. Uh, so I was just being extra careful, but, um, <laughs> so oh, do overall, you guys, it's got a good flavor. So yeah. Do you guys see yourselves like being able to drink multiple of these or mm-hmm. maybe just one? What, what do you think? I could see myself drinking multiple this, of these. I yeah, think uh, easy it's, drink. <clears throat> it's nice and malty and it's got a little of that, you know, hoppy bitterness more so than a typical, uh, style like this. But, um, but I could I could easily drink that. I got that four pack of cans, and I was like, I don't think I could drink all this. I could definitely <laughs> drink all that. And I and with a four point seven percent ABV, I, uh, I it wouldn't be a problem in terms of like getting screwed. So I'm usually not like a fan of like more hoppy like beers, but this one, it's really smooth. It's got it's it's not like really overpowering like an IPA. So I feel like I could knock down probably like two or more of these easy mm-hmm. over like a, over like an hour or so. Yeah, nice. it's a good session so, here. The one yeah, thing I'm brilliant. not in the one thing I'm not in love with uh, with it is the aftertaste. For me, the aftertaste is kind of not pleasant. Um, and this is from somebody who likes bitter, and this it's just like it's a mixture between like kind of weird weedy flavor and bitterness of the hops and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not in love with the aftertaste, but when you, when you're like, take a gulp of it, it tastes good, but it's like this aftertaste that's lingering. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's pretty much the same after a similar aftertaste to like Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. Which I mean, I, I do enjoy Newcastle as like a, you know, regular Newcastle as you know, regular Newcastle, <laughs> like from time to time, but like, it's got a similar aftertaste that, I mean, while not, you know, amazing, it's, it's still, I don't know. I, I feel like it seems normal to me for this kind of beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, kind of that. like, I think it's got like a weird kind of like, it's not citrus, but it's like a citric thing in the end. And that's like with the malt and the hops yeah. and it's just kind of weird. And to me, like it is a little funky. If it were stronger, it might come off a little, um, like medicinal or like band aidy or whatever, but um, <laughs> I think it's okay how it is. To I me, could, it's I not like going. citrus; it's just like stale, like stale mm. wheat. Mm. You know, yeah. I don't know. Different yeah. palates. It's 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 drinkable for sure. It's just mm-hmm. the it, I guess if anything, it makes me want to drink it more because it's like this aftertaste isn't the best. Let me just drink the good tasting <laughs> beer, yeah. and then it's like you're in you're in this infinite loop. You're you're in the fucking blender. That's right? what they want. That's what they I'm want. Not, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not wa- I'm not watching my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Can't block low. Like, uh, isn't like a thing about British ales? Like, don't they usually um, use corn or something? Um, I'm not sure. So it could just be a result of like the malt and the corn, but I don't know if this specific beer itself is brewed with some sort of corn element. I don't. They have know. like a a thing on the back if somebody wants to read it. It's kind of long. I don't know. On the back of what? <laughs> I mean, I'll read it. At the back of the can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's have our let's can. have our our special guest yeah, read it. Our special guest can read it. All right, here we here we go. Here we go. Get a couple of coughs. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, got a got, got, got a clear throat. Got a clear throat. Yeah. There you go. So there Trooper you go. Trooper is a premium British beer inspired by Iron Maiden. 
and handcrafted at Robinson's Brewery. Being a real ale enthusiast, vocalist Bruce Dickinson has developed a beer which has the true depth of character, malt flavors, and citric notes from a unique blend of Bobek, Goldings, and Cascade hops dominate this deep golden ale. Wait, this was brewed, or I mean, hmm. was I, I mean, Bruce Dickinson helped make this, is what I'm trying to say? Well, that's what yeah, it said. I mean, like, on the front of the can, it says created by Iron Maiden. So yeah, they, they like probably... actually help craft that's, I mean, that's why they have the, that's, the that's pretty cool. front of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if it weren't for that, I, I, I wouldn't have known. Like, I would have just been like, oh, this is like a, a British ale. Like, yeah, I thought it was just inspired by. <laughs> I just Iron thought they Maiden. were just Maiden fans. Yeah. You buy it for the label, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's cool. the thing that jumps out at you right away is like I, Iron Maiden has that super like iconic art style, you know, with the skeleton and you know all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the band members actually does all the art for them and really? stuff like that. So it, it's definitely the first thing that jumps out at you, and you're like, yeah, you know, that's Iron Maiden. Whenever I see something that looks like that, I'm always like, that is Iron Maiden. That yep. is what it looks like. So. <clears throat> Um, I think at the end of like uh, I was reading it too. It says uh, it has a subtle hint of lemon uh, in here as well. I don't know if I'm really getting that, but I don't that, get you know, any pretty, citrus at all in this beer. Neither neither do I. <laughs> I only had that little bit of what might have been it in the aftertaste, but I don't think it's lemon. But yeah. it's I not like orange. May, I guess lemon makes sense. Mm-hmm. It, I only kind of get something tangy or not tangy, but like kind of like that in the aftertaste. That kind of that soury, but. It's like a stretch for well, me. Well, let's, uh, let's keep drinking these. Um, I know I have a few questions for Kaku um, before we jump into our rating and then into anime. So I want the uh, stream to be maybe a little bit more familiar why we had them on and stuff like that. So uh, Kaku, going to ask you a couple questions, you know, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of take it from there. But please uh, enjoy your beer uh, during the process. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, chug it. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, chug it. he wants um, to enjoy the beer. <laughs> Uh, I'll start it off with a pretty generic one. You know, if you can tell uh, the podcast and our viewers like a little bit more about you, um, you know, um, kind of what you're about, um, different things like that. So I'll just start it off like that. All right. So, uh, you know, I'm Kakushu, as I've been introduced already. Um, I'm a variety streamer. I like uh, I like long walks on the beach. I like Cheez-Its. Um, my stream, <laughs> uh, my streams usually vary from, uh, from casual gaming, like let's play, like right now I'm working on final fantasy tactics, um, mm, nice. to playing extremely hard super Mario world hacks or Kaizo Mario games. And I do speed running as well, which is like beating a game really, really quickly. And just like working on that for hours and hours on end. Um, <laughs> I stream on uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 9 PM Eastern and Saturdays and Sundays. I start at 3 PM Eastern. Um, Basically, I've been watching anime, reading manga, light novels, visual novels since my freshman year in high school, which is way too many years than I care to admit. (laughs) Um, And yeah, my first manga that I ever read back when I was a wee lad was Naruto. Oh, man. God, that is that is way back when when it (laughs) felt classic. I think that's the first one I actually like read as well. That was the first manga I ever actually picked up before then. It was just watching. So I'm there with you, dude. I'm there with you. Yep, yep, yep. And that's pretty, that's pretty much it. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Super Mario World or SMW. Um, you sold yourself a little short. You are a former world record holder uh, in uh, Super Mario World 96 Exits. Uh, can you kind of explain um, that category, maybe a little bit more about Super Mario World in general? So 96 Exits uh, <clears throat> basically is completing every exit in the game. Um and then some exits or some levels in the game have two ways to beat it. And basically, I go through the entire game and you beat um, the one or the two exits for every level. And in total, there's 96 levels, uh, not including the Bowser fight. And basically, back in 2013, uh, like on the eve of New Year's, I was trying to get um, sub 124 in uh, 2013. And I ended That's up an getting an hour it. and uh, 24 minutes. Yeah. So I ended up getting a 123.52 Ooh. on like December 30th. Cutting it close. And it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I was up for, I was, I was down for the whole 24 hour. Let's grind it. It's happening, dude. And I got it and it was, it was just absolutely amazing. 
Yeah, I was I was there. It was it was hype as hell. I remember I remember that very uh, vividly. That was that was a fun time because I know you'd been grinding at it and working at it for months and months and months. And so to yeah. f- finally see it come together and then with this really hard trick at the end of the run and, and all this craziness, it was it was super hype. So that was that was definitely really awesome. Um, in terms of like hardware and stuff, do you play on like the original hardware? So normally, like I think uh, Super Mario World came out what nineteen ninety on the Super Nintendo. Is yeah. is that what you're playing on and stuff like that? Yeah, I try and I try and play on um, the original hardware that the game was released on. So like for Super Mario World, play on the Super Nintendo, of course. Um, and the main the main thing is with that, you're trying to reduce the amount of delay from like when I press a button and when it happens i'm trying to reduce that so i play on like a crt tv you know the old box yeah tvs that are like heaters i play on those (laughs) that's the way to play yeah for you for you viewers that don't understand old technology crt is (laughs) the best (laughs) flat screens zero lag it's what what we had to deal with when we were kids dude when i was uh, like a really young we still had a fucking gray and white tv i'm not even kidding (laughs) <laughs> parents Damn. go way back <laughs> <laughs> well cool uh that's that's super awesome and again i i highly encourage anybody to uh go to the twitch channel kind of check out uh check out the streams um even if he's not speed running he's, it's always you know entertaining chat is is uh definitely uh fun <laughs> to be a part of uh, we we talk about a lot of anime and stuff in there so if you like anime which you probably do if you're listening to us you know hop in there uh give us your uh your best waifu and we'll battle and yeah, we will uh, battle we'll talk definitely. about it in that chat yeah we will battle <laughs> We will. We do battle a lot. There's yeah, a lot of no. there's a lot of salt thrown around. <laughs> um, it's friendly salt. Kind of kind of sticking in the same realm. I wanted to talk to you about uh, your AGDQ experiences. Um, for those of you not aware, AGDQ is uh, also known as Awesome Games Done Quick. It is a speed running like Super Bowl is like kind of a good way to describe it. But it's all these speedrunners coming together um, in one place live to um, sh- dis- uh, showcase their game and also raise money for different charities and things like that. Um, and Kaku was actually there and participated uh, in Super Mario World. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you and see like w- uh, what that kind of experience was like. So <clears throat> AGDQ as a whole is an absolutely amazing experience. Getting together with like a thousand other people, a thousand plus now, it's, it's growing every year. And just like getting together with people who do the same thing you do, like not necessarily Super Mario World, but other games is is it's insane. And like you're doing this whole thing. It's all for an amazing cause. We're all doing it. We're doing we're raising money for charity. Um, This last year, we raised two million dollars for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Um, Another great thing is like the people you talk to online, the friends you make online through speedrunning. Um, a lot of them go there, so you can you can meet up, you can hang out. Um, they have like a full arcade and everything. They have pinball machines. You can go watch the stream live. Um, it's just it's it's absolutely amazing. And like when I did my run uh, last year, I don't want to talk too much about it because I I literally <laughs> still have not watched it. Uh, I choked I choked pretty hard. It was but, uh, it was pretty bad. We did a uh, still we did a, shit for it. <laughs> Uh, Super Mario World 96 exits. Uh, we we came out. Um, three of my buddies, X Pac 5 uh, Truman and uh, Akisto. We all came out, showed up, and we uh, we did a really good. We put on a really good show. So I'm really really happy with that. But man, you are nervous when you get up on that stage. <laughs> yeah, it, well, I mean, oh, it's, it's close to like you know a hundred thousand people watching you on stream, and it's it's a lot of pressure. You got like two hundred people behind you. Yeah, oh, and like no, to perform some of the some of the tricks that you have to do for that run and stuff like that. It's it's got to be nerve wracking. <laughs> it is. It is absolutely nerve wracking, man. So th- I have a question then, because I've watched AGDQ. And, and, you know, there's always the donations and stuff like that. And there's there's always the girl giving the donations and the whole chat's like grill, grill, grill. But they never show the grill. Is the grill cute? You know, is she, you know, is she a cutie? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, like, should I go toss out my number to see what happens? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, go for it, Torg. Go all right. It. All right. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> He's encouraging you. Yeah. An- another related question. Kill or save the animals? Oh, oh God. Uh, from a speedrunner perspective, kill the animals. Come on, <laughs> Save the yeah. frames, guys. Save the frames. Definitely. Definitely. 
that's that's well, cool. A good that's answer. that's, a good that's answer. Uh, it's always something that I've wanted to go to. So hopefully within the next couple of years, I can make it to that too. But it's it's always a, a super fun event. Uh, I know SGDQ is coming up. Uh, that summer games done quick, so that'll be in the next I think month or so. So that'll be can you yeah, something to look forward to. I think it's, I think it's early to. July. Do you, can yeah, you give like so a really short like small uh, price range for AGDQ like the whole trip as a whole? What is it like? Well, coming from California, I spent I think in the neighborhood of twelve hundred. Like including food and everything else I did. And room and flight, flight, room, okay. all that stuff, about twelve hundred. Okay. Because it's and in it's there it's for like on a East week, Coast, so. right? In like Virginia or something? Yeah, it's in Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. I think And I, it's uh you're there for a week and stuff like that, but obviously if you don't want to stay the whole time, you can go for less or more, just depending on what you want to do. You're gonna have your own speed yeah. run. Get in and get out. <laughs> <laughs> Real life speed run. Oh cool. Uh you know, that's awesome. And I, you know, I always love watching those events. So I encourage our listeners to, to kind of check those out when they're, uh, when they're going on. So, uh, moving on, um, you know, we're drinking beer. Um, I wanted to ask what your favorite types of beer are, um, you know, style, flavor profiles, different things like that. Uh, what, uh, what do you like to drink on, uh, on, if you, if you could have like one beer, like what, what would that beer be? Stuck on oh, an man, island. That's, Desert island. That's hard. Beer. That's, that's really hard. So I'm a stout and Porter guy. Yes. Um, we're I, I love stouts We're and porters right now. Uh, <laughs> basically, it I was like drinking, you know, the generic stuff, and then I went to a um, a local brewery that's near me called the Jack Russell Brewery, and uh, I tried like their flight of beers. They had the Sison, and I hated it. <laughs> and but then they they had this vanilla porter, and oh, that sounds good. The rest is history, man. I tried it. I loved it. I ended up getting like a Bubba jug of it, and I brought it home, drank that. And then from there, I moved to stouts and uh, yeah. But as for like flavors, if it has coffee, chocolate mm. or peanut butter, say less. I'm in there. <laughs> Ooh, so, so like one of my one of my favorite right now, I know you guys have like really hyped it up and stuff. But the Lagunitas Cappuccino Stout yes. is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I got to try the uh, the beer you guys repped the, a couple weeks ago. The Zumbar. Oh, yeah. yeah the you Zumbar. should try that one. You chocolate, like it. Coffee, oh, chocolate, man. I gotta, stout, dude. I got to try it so that much. That eclipsed I've been the been looking Cappuccino for Stout for me, dude. I'm telling you. It is delicious. It might be my new favorite. It's delicious. Did you try the peanut butter stout? Uh, yeah, Belgian I have tried beaver. it. It's, it's very, beaver. very good. Yeah. It's very good. I even got my brother to try it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so good, dude. Spread, spread the news. <laughs> spread the, spread the gospel. Exactly. <laughs> well, right on. Cool, cool. Um, moving on, uh, more towards our anime topics. Uh, you know, let's uh, let's start out right off. What's your favorite anime, or what type of animes do you like to watch? So, my favorite anime of all time absolutely has to be Astronauts Toy. Just kidding. My favorite anime is definitely Wait, Code Geass. Um, it's I it was been on, it was on my backlog for so long, and then when I finally got around to watching it, I pro, I pretty much binge watched two seasons in like a day, or like two days. It <laughs> I was, was about to it say, was, is that physically possible? <laughs> I mean, time machines just do it, man. It, it felt like a day. It just it all blends together. But dude, it's, it's true. It's when so you good. binge it, a show, it's like, oh, is it? Yes. When did I start? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's it's got everything, man. It's got mechs. I love Gundams. So like that whole thing. It's got a really good story. It's got amazing characters. The pointy elbows. Come on, dude. Scheming, backstabbing. <laughs> and there's it's just fantastic endings. <laughs> The both seasons, so well, I I know if uh, if Bidwell ever catches up on anime on draft, he'll be very happy to hear that yeah. because I know that's oh, one yeah. of his favorites. So. <laughs> he shout out, shout outs to Bidwell. Yeah. He, shout outs, to, <laughs> shout outs, man. A little backstory on Bidwell on that is that he watched it when it was on what was it Toonami? Toonami, yeah. 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 it was back it was, it was on that Network. block. I was like, oh, so you watched it like a fucking year after everyone else watched it. <laughs> Yeah, it's super late. <laughs> he's he's, he's like talking it, about it, it so but anyway, it. anyway, um, you know, talking about uh, favorite anime, let's jump right into worst anime. Um, don't say Astros Toy because we all know that, that is a god anime. That is a ten out of ten um, anime, my dude. Okay, so <laughs> it, the worst anime I've ever seen in my life is Ichiban Ushiro no Daimao or Demon King Daimao. Oh, I know which show you're talking about. It is. I watched. I watched the whole series. I that? didn't drop it. It's it's this guy who goes to a school and they like wear a sorting hat to tell you what you're gonna do in your life and he gets to become oh, the Jesus demon Christ. king. Anime and Harry the other guy's a oh, hero. That, yeah, I've seen it's it. Yeah. So, it's so it's so bad. It's not it's very over, good. overly fan serviced. 
the whole show comes full circle, like super bad. It, dude, it's terrible. Yeah, I'll it's give not it a very one. Good. It's the only show I've given a one. There, you you say it's <laughs> it's overly fan service, but you like DXD. I mean, I mean let's DXD talk, let's talk is about not that. the same type of fan service though. <laughs> DXD, like this, DXD this show has a solid different. story. This show didn't I mean, have a story, and then you and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this character that you're like, oh, like she's supposed to be the main heroine. Then why did she get kind of ignored for the majority of the season? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that shows it's not very good i watched it i was like "Ooh, this seems like it'll be good it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> it's, oh God. i mean it's it's better to just skip it if you ever no. see it let's avert your gaze <laughs> dxd is a solid anime don't let zubat fool you right. i mean i i like dxd but it's just like it's a little over the top it's, yeah the it's, uh... the uh the author of the light novels was what helped out with making the anime and he just went balls to the wall man he just <laughs> wanted to do everything he wanted it was great i think it turned out really good Boostle. so kaku <laughs> you've seen nisekoi right yes i have who's uh, who's your waifu oh my god we're gonna go oh uh, well i'll tell you who's the best girl and that's obviously marika worst girl oh, <clears throat> god. marika is no. the best girl the country <laughs> accent uh, she's oh so come weird. on dude no, just i just dude. wanted to throw it out there to make sure that everyone discredits you while while they're listening <laughs> to this they're like oh he's no one listened to his anime opinions because he likes the I'm worst looking, girl <laughs> i'm looking at my mark and android right now and oh, it's, god. it's oh, just god. so cute oh, dude. it's so oh, cute god. let's move on <laughs> Before, yeah, before the three bad. of us get too triggered, I'm like, oh I've been God. like drinking, like I kind of want to vomit now. Like, <laughs> He's like, I'm not gonna finish this uh, beer. I feel I'm, sick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's uh, let's move on. Um, you know, what is uh, what are you watching this season? I mean, obviously, uh, we're gonna talk about Attack on Titan and Era Manga, but are you watching anything else this season? Uh, what are your impressions overall about uh, this season in particular? Spring. So this this season. Um, the only show I'm not watching that you guys aren't watching, um, I'm watching Attack on Titan and Aramaga Sensei. But the show that I think you guys are overlooking is Boku no Hero Academia. That show is out of control. It is, is this- like it's it's super actiony. It has really good story. You see the killer characters really get fleshed out, and dude, it's amazing. This today's episode I haven't seen it yet. It's gonna be out of control. Absolutely out of control. I've, I've heard. I've heard like, it's really good. This, this week's episode but is hype as hell. I thought it was a second season. It, it's in its second season now. Yeah. Oh, that's probably why we didn't pick it up because we only were doing mm-hmm. current seasons. That makes sense. But I wanted yeah, to watch that. I just with all the shows I'm watching for this, <laughs> I just can't. I just can't. I'm still trying to get caught up on last season, dude. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Um, but, uh, those are kind of the three that you're kind of watching this season. Uh, any impressions about them or anything like that? Um, just from watching these three shows, I really like the season. Like I, there's a couple of other shows I want to watch. I can't remember what their names are, but just from these three shows, it keeps me occupied while I do other stuff. You know, I, on Saturdays, I got three shows that pop up, you know, I mean, they're really, really good. I I'm loving them all. They're, they're amazing. Awesome. So uh, I know Rolando, uh, you had a couple questions for Kaku. I'm going to open it up to you guys. Um, go ahead and uh, and fire away at our man here. Cool. All right. So Kaku, question number one: Have you ever dropped a show part way, and if so, why? So there's 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 several shows I've dropped, but the one that sticks out the most because usually if I get past episode three of a show, uh, that completionist in me says. Watch the show in its entirety, and you'll find something good about it. But this one <laughs> show I really didn't like, Strike the Blood. Um, mm. it, like, it has a really good premise, but every single character in the show is Sundere. Every single character. And I just I couldn't take it anymore. I dropped it seven episodes in of wow. 24. I just I couldn't do it. Wow. That's early, man. I, I, it was probably silly. really good. I just that's I rough, couldn't take dude. it, man. That's Everybody rough. was like... <laughs> Teenage angst. Super. <laughs> was not so even, the thing is, like, I don't even think all of them are in in high school. I think they're like, like a couple of them are in middle school. I've seen it, so I know what show you're talking about. I don't know, man. I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least you didn't finish Glass Lip. Like, <laughs> thankfully, I never started Glass Lip. I never started. With your years. warning, I never will. Yeah, no. I mean, ugh, I finished God. that show. 
Yeah, like they Me trick too. you, like, and then like six episodes in, you're like, wait, what is this? Oh god, it's a trap. <laughs> it's just a trap, dude. Yeah, it's a trap. It's All a right. trap. So uh, next question: What is your favorite game? And then after that, maybe what's your least favorite game so my favorite game of all time hands down is final fantasy 6 um, yeah i can i can never not remember like my cousin brought it over and me and my brother sat down on the couch played that game for so long as a kid and like when i discovered how magic works and stuff Dude, it was it was so bally. You feel like such a boss when you figure out how Esper's work and yeah. stuff. Because apparently I skipped a tutorial. <laughs> um, so Final Fantasy VI, amazing story. I absolutely recommend everybody play that game. Yes, it's, everyone it's really should play Kef- that game. Kefka is just the the best Final Fantasy. He is villain, a yeah. great villain. Um, the worst he's... game, the worst game I've ever I've I've had the mispleasure of playing is the Adventures of Pac Man Two. I don't know. Basically, what that is. you have Pac Man, and what? you have to like, you have like a slingshot, and you have Dude, to like shoot stuff. You don't shoot like Pac Man. That game is so bad. So you don't know what the fuck that game is. It's so freaking bad. Oh my god. Oh, dude. dude. Rolando, check it out. Play it. It's terrible, dude. Dude, It is the worst video game ever. It is so fun, dude. It is. I beat it. You don't know what the fuck that game is. (laughs) Don't tell me that game wasn't fun, though, man. That game was fun. Dude, it's there's so <laughs> many problems with it. The yeah, game is awful, oh, bro. I, his facial expressions alone make that game, dude. That, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, dude, dude, I love that it's game. It's so bad. It's awful, I thought, but I, thought I love for it. sure. I thought for sure you're going to say Time Cop. Dude, Time, Time Cop? Cop, Time Cop is a is a gem. <laughs> a diamond in the rough. Time if you haven't played Time Cop, you can be Claude Van Damme going around scissor kicking people <laughs> who are high on brain blast <laughs> let that sink in for a moment it's an absolutely amazing game and probably the only game i've ever been linked dead in blind race so <laughs> a super good game definitely recommend time cop definitely recommend pac-man 2 it's a it's a great game up, that game right. is so fun dude i had that game on dude, the nintendo it's so bad and it is so, so lit bad. that game is so it's lit. bad so lit dude flying around right. on your you're fucking moving, on your, you moving on your fucking glider your paraglider dude <laughs> oh moving, my god moving on so good so all right good. alec do you do you have any questions before uh we uh cut you off here uh no i asked my one wife who question but i think rolando's got one more um yeah real quick so uh your handle cock show where um where was the inspiration for that so uh my grandfather's name kakusho he was a uh he was a legendary speedrunner in japan and uh he speedrun uh donkey kong for arcade and then my father was passed down he ran super mario brothers and you know they passed it on to me and my goal in life was to be good at super mario world and, you know, when I got world record, I got a hug from my dad and he's like, you did it. You did it, son. But no, for for, for real, though, uh, <laughs> the name is just a spinoff of uh, the Magic the Gathering card, Koku Show, um, the Evening Star. I couldn't get that name, so I swapped the A, Kaku Show. There we go. There you go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Pretty much. That's, it's nothing too special. <laughs> I like the I like the other story better. Yeah. You got a hug. The yeah, that's usually what you, I stick with. The first hug you ever got from your dad. Is that the one? <laughs> the one? Yeah. It's, <laughs> he finally loved me when I got world he, record. It's the first time you ever said, son, I'm proud of you. You know, it's, it, it meant that, a lot to me. Before that, all he did was hit me. <laughs> Just got to cut you out for, the second part of my answer. <laughs> you forgot You forgot to mention how they uh, they they work and live in the salt mines of, uh, you know, northern northern Japan in the hills, yep. the hill yep. country. Mm. Everything is uphill. Mm-hmm. Both ways, and it's snowing. Yeah, they're just like in space because they keep walking up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool! Uh, you know, thanks for bearing with the questions and stuff like that. But uh, what do you guys think of the beer? You, you made it through everything that you've got, or still drinking? What are you guys doing? My can's oh, done. done. I finished one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome let's uh let's go around uh go around the room and uh rate these guys i'll start uh with our guest uh so go ahead kaku out of five uh, what would you rate this guy so i'm gonna so this this beer has a really good drinkability to it like i could definitely see myself drinking a couple of these i'm gonna give it a solid 3.75 out of five 
Cool, cool. Uh, Rolando, what are you thinking? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I'm not very well versed in British ales, but this is a very easy to drink beer. Um, it's it very easy to knock back a few of these in a pub. So I'd say or yeah, you know, like room? three and a half out of five. Alec, what do you think? Um, I mean, the sentiment seems pretty clear. It's drinkable. I agree. Um, the flavor is good. Um, it's not the best beer I've ever had, um, but I would definitely knock back like, you know, a couple of these with bros or just on the internet playing games. And I'm going to agree with Kaku and give it 3.75. Right on, right on. Uh, for me, um, I, I like it. I like the drinkability and stuff like that that everybody's uh, mentioned and uh, all that good stuff. But the aftertaste just is, it's like, I keep thinking about it. I keep coming back to it. So I'm going to rate it a little bit lower. I'm going to give it a, a three. Um, but I mean, it, it's good. It's a good, uh, a good you know, British ale. Um, just for whatever reason, I just, I can't get over the aftertaste. So I'm going to rate it a little bit lower. But definitely a good beer. Um, be sure to check out this Iron Maiden crafted Trooper uh, British ale, it's uh, it's pretty good. Crafted um, by Iron Maiden, as well. <laughs> you as, gotta listen to Trooper while you drink. Yeah, it. as well. You should listen to Iron Maiden. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's get into anime, guys. We got a lot to talk about since uh, we missed uh, last week. Um, Let's uh, jump right into Attack on Titan for this week. Uh, we'll start with uh, episode 34, and then as we go, we'll kind of transition to uh, episode 35. Um, but 34, um, entitled Opening, uh, starts off, you know, we have our scouts on their way trying to find Aaron and uh, Ymir, as well as uh, Bertold and uh, Reiner. Um, as we remember from uh, the previous uh, week, uh, you know, Ymir, or sorry, Reiner and Bertold uh, run away with those two, um, and they're kind of hiding out while everybody kind of recovers and things like that. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about before I throw it over to you guys was um, the uh, Hanji uh, wanting to return to the village uh, where the Connie's mom Titan was, and they then kind of confirm um that that titan was uh connie's mom they look at the picture and stuff like that so our assumptions from earlier in the uh, in the podcast were kind of right uh, but we kind of have no closure in terms of that like how did she get there what happened to everybody else in the village uh things like that so i thought that was uh was kind of interesting but i'll uh, i'll throw it over to you guys um i guess we'll start with kaku what do you what do you think of this episode um so this episode there was a lot a lot of talking um you find you get you get like uh reiner um talking to ymir and uh and aaron a lot um you see that reiner really isn't in the right frame of mind like he's he's uh he's been like assimilated to being a soldier and he's kind of confusing like his warrior life versus his scout life um and bertholdt like really is kind of disturbed by this, but like not to the point where it's like it's normal, which is kind of weird if you think about it. Um, I think I I think I wrote in my notes. Reiner is fucking delusional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. Dude. He's, he's, he's losing it. He man. a crazy. And like and like you like you mentioned too. Like Bertolt's like looking at him and he's he's just like almost like fucking hand on face. Like oh my god. Like what? Like stop talking. Like he's like this shit, again. Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Um, another thing I'd like to point out, how good the ambient music is in this anime. Yes. When they're having yeah. conversations, if you just like listen to the conversation, listen to the music in the background, it fits so well. It's amazing how like the music is sets the mood like really, really nicely. Mm -hmm. They definitely do a really good job. Yeah. With the that. composer, uh, someone uh, here, uh, Hiroyuki does a lot of. Um, really interesting compositions, but especially the stuff that has vocals in it. We, like I'll cover that when we talk about the next episode. But yeah, it's really good. Yeah, that's something we haven't really talked about uh, too much in this anime. But it's just like from opening all the way through ending and everything in between. The music is just you know phenomenal. It's it's the I think I think uh, aesthetically this is just a good anime. The music is great. The, uh, the drawing, the animation is awesome. They have a good balance between 3d, um, like 3d models that they use sometimes. And, you know, the 2d that is, you know, 
the staple. Um, I think it's just totally aesthetically pleasing in terms of uh, how it's done and things like that. And I know we've talked about it in the past too. Um, to kind of keep up this quality. Um, I know the studio wasn't expecting to, you know, the first season of the 25 episodes or whatever to be so popular. But like I said before, if they could, you know, take a break for a couple seasons and then just keep delivering this type of quality and keep giving us the story and stuff like that, I would totally be up for, you know, waiting um, and, you know, getting this great quality. Cause a lot of times in anime these days, like there's like a couple episodes that you always notice. Oh, oh, that's like no budget this episode. Like, okay. But I mean, even (laughs) in this episode where they were just talking for a majority of the time, the animation is like always spot on. I don't know if you guys agree or not. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the, the details that go into like Aaron's face when they do like close ups when he's like telling Reiner that, you know, he shouldn't be acting like a human because he's not, Calling he's him like a, a murderer, murderer and stuff. Yeah. yeah, like the 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 details on his face, like from coming out of Titan form, is like really nice. Mm-hmm. I mean, his eyes are mm-hmm. huge, but I mean, whatever. Even That's when animated. they, <laughs> even that when they like you, you come like out planted, off you of can't him. talk about fucking. <laughs> even even when Fair they enough. like zoom out from his face, and it's not a close up. They still keep like a huge majority of those details around his eyes from like the Titan marks mm-hmm. and all that stuff. It, they don't like, you know, slack. Sometimes you'll see when they like you zoom out and there's, they slack on the, the details like that. They don't at all. It's just like, it's all still there. It's really good. Yeah. yeah it's, it's really, really nice mm-hmm. to see the, the attention to detail. Definitely. This episode was also, um, um, Aaron, he was, he was just sitting there like thinking to himself for a while. And I feel like he was just asking a whole bunch of questions that we've all been asking in the podcast and ourselves for like the last three episodes. Like, so who's bad? Where do they come from? Like all these questions. I'm like, we've been asking that dude. Thanks for finally (laughs) acknowledging that. That's cool. Yeah. I think we got a ton of answers to this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of that, exactly what you're saying. The one thing that sort of pissed me off, though, was like Aaron at the very beginning of the episode is like, I need to keep my emotions in check. Yeah. And I'm like, and he's not going to keep it. And then he no starts way. yelling. And then, he, and then he loses his shit. Literally, yeah, he loses his shit. literally <laughs> two minutes later, he starts fucking yeah. screaming at Ryan. I'm just like, yeah, all right. Like, <laughs> Good job, Aaron. Yeah, murderer. <laughs> and when he's saying that, I need to keep my emotions in check, he's like shaking and his face is like angry. I'm like, dude, you're, you're failing right Right now, like at least yeah. like if, if anyone that. if anyone is chilling, it's like fucking Ymir. Like she's just like legs crossed, yeah. like you she, know my arm well, and legs growing leg back. and a so, half crossed. Like, yeah, like, she, leg crossed. Ymir's yeah. the one that says, "Dude, stop acting like a fucking child." Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You are a fucking child, Aaron. Mentally, like, yeah. I'm not gonna keep my stock in you if you keep acting like this. And then, well, you know, she she didn't. <laughs> so. Oh, spoilers for the next episode, dude. Come oh, on. sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> We're not going to talk um, about next episode <laughs> in like two minutes. <laughs> the uh, thing I wanted to ask you, Rolando, was um, we saw Ymir, who's kind of like this like third party. You know, we have Aaron, who's uh, inherently good. We know that Reiner and Bertold are on this like opposite side. And Ymir is kind of like off on her own little island with her own personal agenda and stuff like that. Uh, one thing she mentioned... Um, was she said like she called them uh, in terms of Bertolt and Reiner she's like those bastards so we don't really know what side she's on and we kind of figured out as we go through like the next episodes but what what did you kind of think of like what what do you think her agenda is like what is she kind of up to um if we if we want to like transition this a little into the next episode where we do get a bit more backstory from Emir I think she's honestly just acting for herself I she agree. has no affiliation with anybody. She's just completely acting for her own selfish reasons. That's kind of what I think, too. And in terms of we, and I think we can kind of move to the next episode. I don't know if you guys wanted to mention anything else from the first one, because no. this one was kind of, there wasn't a whole lot that no, I had no, about no. it. I, I think um, the first one was pretty. Yeah, the, the one thing I'll mention before moving on talking about Ymir was um, that everybody holds Krista in this crazy high regard um she's like this key to something bigger well, have more uh, and fun, we see dude. that <laughs> i guess <laughs> um but it's all kind of the things we've been talking about in terms of you know 
her background, her blonde hair, um, the uh, ending um, art and things like that. Um, I think it all is going to tie together, but we'll see that uh, going into the future. But in terms of like y- Ymir's background, uh, super interesting, you know, when they're all talking together. And it's like she mentioned something about wandering outside the walls for 60 plus years. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If not knowing really what's going on. Um, we see a little bit of um, and I'll let you guys talk about this. But we see a little bit of like this cult. And this was like the previous 60 years when she was like younger before she got banished outside when the she was walls. A kiddo. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you guys uh, what you thought uh, going talking about this cult thing. They mentioned like the blood of the king. And we talked about when we were going through the ending, the kids eating the blood of like this dead, like royal man sort of picture. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, do you think that relates and does that in turn mean immortality? Does that in turn mean that they have Titan powers if they do that? What, what do you guys think about that? Um, yeah, I, I definitely think, um, this is tying into all this, those Im- that imagery in the ending sequence, um, whether or not like they kind of paint it as Emir was just randomly handpicked to be a representative of this quote unquote royal bloodline um but i think it does at least show that this titan transformation ability is something that's passed on like genetically or i don't know necessarily genetically but like through the one some thing sort of that thing. was Blood weird for me though um was do you remember the scene where that she's like getting banished over what looks like a wall yeah. or yeah. whatever and they have all the cultists <laughs> the the one thing that was confusing for me is she gets stabbed pushed and then you see the light of like the transforming titan light yeah did did they do the does the church control the power of the titans and turning them into titans and maybe did they like create them in Maybe. the past like the previous 60 years in the past like that was um, a punishment like, be a yeah, titan it could be, it yeah could or be or maybe they had them like they were breeding some sort of like genetic army or something like that i don't i, I thought it was kind of i thought on the wall they were actually like injecting them with something and then kicking them over the wall yeah like to turn it, them into titan because I, because the previous lady yeah. they kicked off before you mirror they, they they stabbed her Kicked her off. She transformed because you saw the light. And then they did it mm-hmm. to Ymir and then she transformed too. Mm-hmm. And she stayed mm-hmm. a Titan so, for like a long time. That's yeah, like the 60 yeah. years. And then uh, so I, was, I think they're making Titans. Was it just me the or church? did the guy who, you know, when when they stormed her little her little hold where the people are bowing to her and uh, the priest was like, it's her. He like, you know, pit, pointed at her or whatever. That guy looked a lot like uh, Pastor Nick or whatever. Just, I don't, think, I don't yeah, know if it's, it's a similar just model that they're using because priests or whatever, because the priest in the in the castle talking about Krista and how they like made her a soldier mm-hmm. also looked the same. So I'm not sure like if it's just a priest thing or if that's Pastor Nick or some shit like that. So <clears throat> Pastor Nick is old. I don't think it's I mean, the same it's guy. definitely possible, but yeah, I don't think it's the same well, person. I think the important thing, <laughs> I think the important thing to take out of that, though, is that the church knows something more or yeah, they have definitely. control over something, oh, whether it's definitely. that, mm-hmm. whether it's that they created the walls out of the Titan, whether it's that they can create Titans in general, we don't really know yet, but I think that's definitely something to keep an eye out for in the future. It's, 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 she was chilling in the ground the for least. forever. Well, I mean, <laughs> she popped up and, and ate that. She don't need to eat. It was, it was part <laughs> of her plan. It's just a sneak attack. Yeah. <laughs> Sixty years sneak attack. Let me eat this. Burrow, guy. Burrowed banelings or something. <laughs> yep, just like the Zerk man. <laughs> um, anything else you guys want to add about kind of Ymir's past? Um, before we move. No, I think it was nice to finally get a couple answers about her though. Because I've we've mm-hmm. all been curious, like who the mm-hmm. fuck she is, really, <laughs> and uh, it's nice to finally get a couple, couple, a little bit of you know insight into who she is and where she came from. So that was that was definitely nice. Yeah. I'm just I'm just so curious as to this blood of the king mm-hmm. and immortality and creation of titans and that cult and all all that stuff. Why is the church against that cult and and things like that? I think that's super interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. I also do think that all this backstory that uh, Emir is getting is, and Hans as well. They're I think they're mm-hmm. both kind of triggering death flags. Yeah. 
I was I was gonna mention that uh, Hans was like, "I'll do it even if I have to die." Yeah. Like while well, he's <laughs> he's rip, running in, I was like, I was like, "Is are they trying?" He's saying that, and that's like that's clearly a death death flag. But is he gonna actually not die because he said I would dude, die? Hans is immortal. Dude. <laughs> Somebody Hans else is, is gonna die because he wants to die for it. <laughs> like Mikasa is just gonna rip. And it's gonna be like what? And then everyone's gonna Mikasa is not gonna die. No, but Mikasa that would be will never die crazy, in this show. That'd be dope. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> be a um, twist. Another thing I wanted to talk about um, was uh, Reiner talking to Ymir about not only the Beast Titan she calls him out on, and she's like, "You know what that guy is? Like, it's so obvious. Like by the way you reacted to it." Um, I thought that was cool. They he also says something about Aaron being the coordinate. Um, did you guys catch that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's not. not sure what that then means. we should look at Krista. Yeah, that's the first time they've said the coordinate before. I think. Well, this yeah, is I, I have no idea. I don't know. I didn't know if that was like a translation thing or is that like a name for something. But it seems that either the Beast Titan is commanding them, or the Beast Titan knows about Aaron, knows about Krista, knows about you know something going the on there, and and wants to capture them or wants to take them back. And these guys, uh, Bertolt and Reiner, aren't allowed to go back to their, quote, hometown or whatever it happens to be without the coordinate, um, without probably Krista, because Krista sounds really fucking important, and without uh, Annie again in uh, in their custody. Um, what, do you, what do you think about the Beast Titans' relationship with them, guys? He, he has to be some sort of, like, leader, I, I, that's the only thing that would make remote sense. Cause I mean, if he's able to like command, um, Titans to like the extent that he does, I, I imagine he's probably pretty high up. Cause I don't think when, like any other like Titans have been able to do that. Like I know that, yeah. uh, Oh man, Annie was able to like call them to her yeah, she or whatever, jail. but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like complete control. Like, yo, stop, you know. Yeah. And then, mm. okay, go, <laughs> like go, go back to He stops talking. munching on yeah. his legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and I, it, I feel like especially, especially being able to control them at night, mm-hmm. right? Because that's because yeah, like they can move a huge they sleep deal at night yeah. when they're around him. <clears throat> yeah. And they said these ones can't. Uh, Reiner said that he's like these ones can't. Those ones before mm-hmm. could so. Yeah, uh, also, especially because Emir um, mentions that she's afraid of getting, quote-unquote, eaten by their warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, if their warriors are other things like the Beast Titan, or that monkey Beast Titan, then she probably is like, yeah, that thing's huge, they're gonna, like, kill me. Um, so, getting back to, kind of, uh, Ymir again, uh, we see that you know, kind of like you talked about, she has her own agenda and was basically as uh, Reiner and Bertolt are running away. She says, if you guys don't fucking stop and get my waifu <laughs> back for me right now, I'm going to just like run away and you guys are going to get fucked by it. So she, she basically forces them to stop. She then transforms again, um, runs out, grabs Krista by kind of tricking the scouts. They're like, Hey, it's oh, Ymir, cool. Ymir, where is everybody? and then you know gobbles up uh, Chris I don't think she's dead I, no, I, obviously I, I don't think anybody can <laughs> argue really her leg was sticking out um, no blood splatter she's fine yeah yeah she's getting um, nibbled on yeah but it it kind of shows you her her motives uh, as well as you know we know now that she is going to be working with them at least as long as they can um, ensure Krista's safety that's another reason um, why I think she's forward. just working for herself too because like she just wanted to see Krista and she's like, I'll fuck you guys over if I don't get to do what I want. Basically. And, <laughs> Great. Yeah. and she's like, I'm going to see Krista. And we, we, we know, My wife we life. know like the, cl- and she's smart about it too. Cause she knows the colossal Titan isn't going to do shit. Like he's huge. Yeah. He's going to run slow as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like if he can even run, yeah. you know, he can keep and, a wall. you know, <laughs> go, go along his way. And then Reiner's slow as fuck. Like he's, he's not going to be able to really do much, but she's like, you know, leave this to me. I'll go get him, And then you get us out of here sort of deal. So she's, she's smart about it. Mm-hmm. At least she's not, she's, she's very calculating. Unlike um, Aaron in terms of her strategy. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you would ever emotionally calculated, then I've, I don't know. Emotionally <laughs> driven. More stable than Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Aaron's nuts. Um, <laughs> any uh, any last thoughts about these uh, these couple of episodes? I, I, I really enjoyed them. Yeah. Looking forward to the I next one. Be, a lot. The next episode is going to be sick. Yeah. 
I don't know. I think it might be slowing down for an episode, and then they're gonna leave us with something crazy. I think it's gonna be. I think it'll be like slow, but I think it's because it's like uh, when friends become foes or whatever. So I think it's gonna be like good dialogue. I think it's gonna be a good episode. Yeah. Yeah. I should be. I like. uh, I mean, I want to mention real quick um, what I was gonna mention earlier when we were talking about the music. Um, I thought that the two uh, vocal um, soundtrack songs in the in this ep- episode were were very good and um i don't know i'm a, a particular fan of the composer and um any if anybody ever watched what was it aldno zero or played xenoblade chronicles x um he does the the composition for both shows or not shows but like aldno zero is a show and then Xenoblade Chronicles X was a game on the Wii U, so maybe not many people actually have played it. <laughs> but uh, um, the, a lot of the vocal stuff that he does is really cool. They're not necessarily in Japanese; they're usually in like German or like other stuff. But it's I thought it was nice. good. Yeah, Aldo Zero is tight. Yeah. Like, the, the, well, the first season the is the first tight season and was the mu- cool, <laughs> and the and the, the, mu- the music throughout is awesome. But second season kind of dropped the ball. But the music is definitely definitely tight. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, you know, we, we're all looking forward, I think, to uh, to the next one. But uh, let's uh, let's talk about uh, pretty quickly uh, Soccer Quest. I know Kaku, you're not watching it, so we'll we'll try to go over it uh, pretty quickly. Um, a couple of uh, of cool things happened this week. Um, our new conflict is uh, we have. Um, we have uh, what's her name? Uh, Shiori's sister. Uh, she's a nurse, and she um, we she we get introduced to her, and um, she had like this old like kind of crush um, who went off to be like a French chef, and they get reunited and stuff like that. Um, so we see that development. We also see the um, the um, sorry the tourism board kind of getting you know, overstepping their boundaries with the, uh, the merchants and having to, uh, kind of repair that relationship. So it seems like we take one step forward. We think, you know, we're going to have this, you know, awesome, uh, food festival with the tourism board. And then, you know, two step backwards, they fuck up with the merchant uh, board by scheduling it on the same day, as well as, you know, not talking to them and stuff like that. So it seems like we're always kind of, you know, we're, we're trying to do our best and uh, the queen and everybody and the ministers, you know, they're trying to do good, but, you know, they're always kind of shooting themselves in the foot uh, moving forward. So, yeah, basically we get um, Yoshino and the crew, the, I'll, I'll call them the crew, they're the ministers. Um, <laughs> they basically create this, not catering um sh- what are these chef things called like fucking she called it something retarded. it's like yeah. su- culinary <laughs> that's the word i'm looking for um they're having like this culinary competition to like make a special dish for the for the town for Marayama, and it's basically like they didn't go through the board of merchants which they're actually supposed to it's like an unspoken rule um and they happen to put it on that same day like you said as their whole festival and so they they do this, they don't get the approval, and then now the board of merchants is pissed, and so um, Shiori ends up taking the mantle of being the leader of this whole project and fixing everything, and um, I'm kind of like combining the end of the, pre- the first episode we're covering with like this week's episode, mm-hmm. but like, you know, Shiori ends up covering for all the stuff that gets fucked up because Yoshino got all super excited about everything and like didn't really like you know check her check her work you know like she always does and yeah I mean (laughs) that's just her personality Mm -hmm. but um I actually thought that this was a lot of good um whatchamacallit development for Shiori because I actually Mm -hmm. like her character a lot in this show and um Mm -hmm. she She's grown a lot as a character just within these past two episodes. Like she's been willing to overcome her shyness, not necessarily shyness, but like she's got like a fear of like failing and all of that in order to mm-hmm. uh, help the board of tourism as well as make, um, you know, the town more well known, which she does love. And to save her friend. 
Yes. <laughs> she definitely steps outside her comfort mm-hmm. zone um, in these past two episodes, which is which is really cool. Um, and like like you said too, I think she's a really awesome character. Um, her backstory and family is is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you guys think of the the romance between her sister and the uh, the bear man? <laughs> I thought it was funny. I thought it was a pretty like cool addition because it was kind of the first we've seen of it. But I thought it was pretty funny how they resolved it where she's like, oh, shit, I forgot to change my calendar, basically. And she's basically just airheaded. <laughs> and yeah, he went like off to France. He's a, yeah. mo- most, of, most of their family seems kind of airheaded. Yeah. I mean, the dad or like the, the grandparents overhearing the conversation like, oh, she, he, he must like Shiori. Yeah. And then the dad like having this like brutal heart to heart with her. <laughs> yeah. Just like, uh, let's go for a walk. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I, I think the family in general is kind of airheaded, but they're, they're, you know, they're nice and they mean well, and they're, you know, this kind of simple, you know, farm, farm like family, which is, which is kind of cool. But, uh, what we, uh, threw me go off for it. was she was like, so the Sunday after graduation, you had graduation and you, you're like, oh, well, Sunday's coming up. I'll go. What do you need a calendar for that for? That's all I'm going to say. You're like, oh, sorry. Sunday yeah, after graduation. What? I just had Doesn't graduation two days ago. Oh, I need to wait a week because that's the Sunday after. Grad- <laughs> like what? Really? Are you that airheaded? That's like impossible. So uh, that, that threw me off. But anyways, I mean, it served their purposes, so it's OK. And then uh, just real quickly, kind of a, a summary of the episode, um, we end up having like this uh, almost like farmer's market cultural festival mm-hmm. around, um, what is it, Soba? Soman. Soman, sorry, Soman. Um, and, you know, we have like kind of like a cook off and a challenge and, you know, we have a winner and it's some the moms. stuff happens. But. Moms always win. <laughs> Yeah, mo- the moms group. I moms. didn't understand that. No. I, <laughs> moms are tough, dude. I think it's like a club for moms, is what it, you know, it's like a knitting probably. club or something. I don't know. They were yeah, cooking. It yeah. was like moms together, and when they were talking to them to try and get them to make a booth or whatever, they were cooking. So I'm guessing it, they probably do different activities. It's just a club for yeah. for house moms. <laughs> but my favorite part um, of the episode but- was the noodle game that she came oh, up yeah. with she's just sitting there <laughs> noodles are shooting at her and she gets up like she got blasted <laughs> she's like i can't walk she had, like noodles in her hair yeah. and shit <laughs> That's like pretty funny. uh kind of kind of what we said before she kind of jumps head first mm-hmm. into things without thinking with about the crazy them, inventor guy <laughs> I mean, we got to we got to see her in a bikini so i mean there's that <laughs> i mean that was gonna be expected it mm-hmm. is anime at some right point. <laughs> some point <laughs> Oh, cool. Um, yeah, a couple of good episodes. Uh, lighthearted again, um, but we'll look. Uh, we'll look forward to the next one. Um, all right, let's uh, now jump into our last uh, anime topic. We're going to be talking about the always controversial uh, Arrow Manga Sensei um, <laughs> episode eight. We have uh, <laughs> we have Dreaming Sagiti and the uh, Summer Fireworks. Um, Rolando, do you want to start us off? Yeah, uh, I particularly did not enjoy this episode too much. Um, I enjoyed the next episode a bit more, but I'm just going to preface this with if we weren't covering this show, I probably would have dropped it already. Um, Just because there's so much about it that kind of, you know, gets to me. It's kind of like, it's kind of, for me, it kind of, it's kind of like um, the, the author just like left like just where he ended up with or emo like he just like went from there and just like i'm gonna just keep going and and so like it kind of feels like or emo a bit condensed um to me in terms of how much it it triggers me um (laughs) but um there's just a lot of stuff to it it's just like sagiri has just been grinding my gears like a lot and then um, she has gotten more and more annoying to me as well. It, she's a terrible. She's, she's an a awful bad character. character. <laughs> she's just like not very well like written. Written. It's nope. just she just is annoying. She's stale. She's stale. stale. She's exactly. Stale. She has like a. She, she has like a couple of like funny like facial expressions and like she'll like do that like bleh face yeah. or whatever like that's kind of cool for like a while but it's just like overall her character is retarded yep. like she is sun- <laughs> she is sunder she is sundered as hell she will not admit to herself anything she can't leave her room yeah, yeah that's <laughs> in this like- in this episode though 
she did master the stairs. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I wrote that actually. Yeah. I was, I'm like, it's like, oh my god, she she's finally able to walk again. Like, yeah, she what? couldn't like, she wasn't like a toddler learning to walk. Like, yeah, I can't take steps downstairs. I'm like, God, oh, yeah, I don't like her. I don't like her. <laughs> so personally, I think I think Sigiri's okay. I mean, she she definitely is like. But then you like Marika. So. A repeated, <laughs> wow, dude. A repeated like- kid. Like she's like more of a one trick <laughs> pony. Sure. I think her character's okay, though. I mean, for what you could do with a neat character that never leaves their room, <laughs> eh, I think it's all right. And by neat, he doesn't mean N-E-A-T neat. He means N-E-E-T neat. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The term created by oh, the, the British the, government and then adopted by other countries. <laughs> <laughs> the The thing that pissed me off the most about this episode, they he couldn't resist. He had to bring Kuro Neko into this anime somehow. Not and best girl. Yeah, so that so that they was, show that it's that he's not writing or it's in this. <laughs> he had to like prove it. Like guys, it's it's not the same thing. They're they're in the same world. Like it's like Jesus when Christ. I saw that they're writing, they're writing. Yeah, I saw I the, saw on the TV. The I was like, what the fuck? This character looks really familiar. And I was like, oh, it's Kuro Neko's mm-hmm. younger sister. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, there she is how much how much do you think they had to pay uh hanazawa kana to uh, come in and uh do those voices because she voices all three of those Her little cameo <laughs> those probably oh geez <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that oh, that really pissed me off um but moving moving through the episode you know we had this like rap party where all the people who participated or i guess it was the top three who participated mm-hmm. in the uh the light novel contest uh show up and we have Mur- Masa, who's obsessed with Masamune, um, in a weird way. It's like whatever. And then uh, Shido is like the guy who came in third. He wrote about like sweets and is always mistaking uh, Masamune for being yeah. gay. That's kind of weird. Arrow manga sensei is a guy, and he's like, "You're misunderstanding." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to stay in the room no. with you, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was in the the next episode a couple of funny funny scenes with that but the the first episode was kind of made i like the second episode better. Way better i think we can move move on talking so one thing talk for the first episode that. that i want to say real quick sure. is like sure how many times does masamune have to get in, hit in the face with the door to know <laughs> to stand on the left side or just, farther back <laughs> i mean yeah. god man get out of the way times. He's getting whacked in I mean, the face. He's, he's so brain cells. He, he's so obsessed with with his little sister. He just you know he can't he can't get out of the way. It's just it's he's too much. Abused, I want her man. to hit me. He loves the abuse. He probably loves yeah. It. He's, he's, he's like <laughs> he's like Drew. He's a masochist. That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but uh, any anything else about the uh, episode eight before we move on? I mean, we got we had fireworks and Sagiri's like. I'm waiting for you, and I like you. We had Yamada whatever. Sensei in that Dude. one, right? Elf, in that. Yeah, she was she's, she's the best character. Yeah, she, I, yeah. She's I'm honestly. pretty because I was like, I, I'm I pretty sure she was in that this. episode because I remember thinking when she showed up, oh, here she comes again to save the episode. <laughs> I remember yeah. thinking that because they had that. She he, she was to him on the stairs, right? Well, she was wearing that tight, like short skirt yakata dude, and I was like, okay, okay, uh, emoji, okay, hand emoji, <laughs> like she is yeah. the saving grace of these She's episodes, uh, certain ones. Yeah. I'm just like, thank God she shows up. If they didn't, if she didn't show up in that episode. I'm like, this episode, this whole episode sucks. <laughs> And normally, like, uh, Chunibyo characters piss me off, but, like, she's just, like, she has the right amount of it. Like, she yeah. can pull it back mm-hmm. when she wants to be serious, which is good. Um, but she's she's the best character. Yeah, she's not. I, I don't think there's any debate. What you're saying. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so episode nine, uh, we have the fan service episode or what I'm calling like, most episodes. The Yamada service, service episode. We talked about mean? that. The beach episode. <laughs> yeah, we talked, we talked, we talked about it at length, um, the couple weeks ago when, uh, we were talking about, you know, Japanese culture and all that stuff. So we're not going to get into that, but, um, you know, they go to the, they go to the island. Uh, Yamada elf is fucking loaded, I guess. Um, owns Great. a fucking private island. Yeah. And a huge <laughs> sure. house. <laughs> Like it's it's basically a hotel, yep. like but she she owns they the whole thing. Have a fucking private Crazy. like outdoor bath and shit. Fucking yep, yep. <laughs> fucking ridiculous. But um, 
we uh, we we get the whole crew to go. Um, Sigiri says that Masamune can go, even though everybody's thinking like, "Oh no, he, she's gonna say no and be jealous or whatever." But she's like, "I'm working on on our dream. I'm working on the uh, the light novel drawings." And we're like, and "She okay, wants pansy shots, there. dude." I'm, yeah, yeah. It's like you do that. We don't even like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the episode was meet, so good. Uh, she wasn't in it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a good episode. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but uh, we meet uh, Elle's older brother, uh, Chris, uh, who is also her editor. Um, they, I mean, I, it's kind of obvious that their family is like Western. Um, At least half or something. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, he's a funny character. Lines. Her brother. He's, yeah. He's, he's, he's always he's, there. <laughs> he's like watching. Yeah, he just shows like, up and she's like, put the sunscreen. And he's like, this isn't what it looks like. And he's just gone. Like, <laughs> well, then we, we mentioned it a little bit, but the uh, the scene where they're both in the bath. Yeah. And he's like, Mar- uh, Mary, like you guys get married or whatever. Like, what about then, marriage? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's Sh- it's Shido, Shido walks in and just like, uh, excuse uh, me. I'm sorry that for was interrupting. Funny. And he just runs out. <laughs> Just like total misunderstanding. Uh, the one thing that was weird about this episode, they own this private island. You know, they have all this money, et cetera, et cetera. But no one can fucking swim. <laughs> like, right? <really? Yeah. laughs> She's like, I can't what? swim. It makes no sense. I can't, I can't swim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That She's like, my plan, sense. no. <laughs> all I can do is play the piano, cook, sew, do all these right. other things. But I never got taught to swim. <laughs> Don't know how to doggy paddle. I mean, right. Come on, man. Yeah. Everybody knows how to doggy paddle. Yeah. I know, Alec, you mentioned it, but, uh, you know, they play out these scenarios. So Masamune gets to sunscreen Yamada. They uh, they do like a watermelon smashing and sh- splashing water on each other. You know, the stereotypical tropes and it's, quote, research. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, good good amount of She forces here, Muramasa to wear that tiny bikini and she's super comfortable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, and he's a, he's the yeah. <laughs> he's the uh, the avid gentleman, and so you like take my jacket, like whatever. Although I kind like, of took that to that? be like kind of like, dude, put this jacket on. You look hideous. <laughs> That's how I felt. That's how I yeah. felt too. He oh was God. like, take this jacket and put it away. Damn. Like, put that away. You're, you're scarring my eyes. Come on, man. No, he was going well, he put is, it he... away before before I need to cover the front side of my body. <laughs> Well, if he likes if he likes Sigiri, he's a little like yeah. So there's no way he know. likes someone that has the like, kind of type of body that um, what's her face is. She's just a little more Armasa. developed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that makes Yamada such a tight character is like when uh, Chris and Masamune are talking. Uh, she mentions before they get in the bath, he's like, "Oh, if you want to le- look over and uh, sneak a peek, you know, you have to be careful because the uh, the fence or the wall is kind of creaky." And so, like, they're talking and like he's talking like good about and her the and all this stuff, creaky. and it's like you hear the creak. And creak, then they yeah. they keep. Yeah. I love how they they did that. It would creak, and they both are like, "Huh." And they look over at it, and then they start talking again, and then it creaks a huh, and they look over. That was I was laughing so hard that they kept. It was like when you play a video game, and like somebody you know you get spotted over. It's like huh, Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. It, was, it reminded me of that. I was just picturing exclamations over their head, like huh, what was that <laughs> noise? Yeah, I'm I'm up. honestly surprised though that we didn't get a shot of her like looking over and then like the wall breaking and. It, hit her like falling on him and that whole thing i'm glad they didn't they didn't go full cliche yeah yeah that is i'm really glad i'm glad they kept it because then it made how when they both walked out at the same time it made it more funny funny yeah and she was like yeah yeah. it's like is your face written did you see she was was embarrassed yeah and she's like you're (laughs) stupid and she runs away just like pieces yeah Also, like Chris is like, uh, you're you're dating my sister, right? And he's like, no. no. He's like, well, her Twitter says that you guys are like fucking dating. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like her character is so cool. Yeah. And then uh, you know, going off of that too, uh, she has like this. She pulls him out to uh, like this like private walkway sort of deal with all oh, the yeah, fireflies. This is the best like, scene in there. It, she she she's just the best character. Like talk about Rolando. Like she's she's just so good. Yeah, I I actually. Um, noted that this scene was like i really liked it just the whole um 
like the animation was very well I done. It was drawn really well. Yeah. yeah. It <laughs> looked really, really nice. And then but you could imagine got, yourself there and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like the whole, like, it's not really a confession scene, but like, you know, it's like basically kind of, you know, half ass, like how they would do it. It's not half ass, but like how a character a, like Yamato would do it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's a like, confession scene. I don't scene. really like you. <laughs> essentially but it's not one but i just thought that it fit very well with both of their characters and like the whole the whole pacing of it was done very well i thought it was like one like this was like what kind of redeemed the show a little bit in my eyes albeit knowing that this is not like how it's going to end up, even though they're course, trying yeah. to paint it up as like, oh, like she's a she's a true contender, except that this dude's only got his eyes for his fucking younger mm. stepsister. But um, <laughs> unfortunately, gonna remo it. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what I what I <laughs> what I really liked about this scene, too, it shows us who like non Chunibyu uh, Elf Yamada is. And this is kind of how she's based her life kind of off this area of this uh, um private island or whatever it is um but you know she says like i based i based my books off of this area um this is you know where my parents kind of you know met and not met but like proposed to each other and you know he shot her down and so tying kind of her situation into his and we just see her open up and we get you know this really awesome true character um who is totally being honest with him and saying like you know, I know you got this other thing going on with your little sister. You know, fuck that, pick me, sort of deal. Yeah. Um, so that was that this was. This really situation's cool. kind of the opposite of what she described with her parents too. It was <laughs> yeah. her. It was her dad like proposing to her mom, and then her mom being like, "Oh, I hate bugs." But in this one, it's like her saying like, "You're gonna propose to me or whatever," and then and then like, I like my little like, sister. I like my little sister. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I I was sitting here like, please God, I hope I hope. She's such a better just even her yeah. her reasons for because she obviously has feelings for him. Yeah. Even her reasons for having feelings for him are more genuine than the other two. Sigiri's just like I don't. She's retarded. Okay, she's just stupid. <laughs> her reasons are so yeah. dumb. She's like, Ugh, I like you, but there's never been any reason. And then Muramasa is just like, I like your books. It's like, well, you're just a fan and you're a stalker. That's what you are. And then she's like, I, <laughs> I think that. And then and then Yamada Elf is like, Yo, beep, beep, if beep, we beep, like beep, live beep, together beep. and we're married, I think every day would be fun. I'm like, Damn, girl, that's. That's a good reason, right? You know, you're like, yeah. Yep. And he's like, sorry, I like my little sister who doesn't leave her room, hits me with the door all the time, <laughs> makes me cook her food, and then is just like always mean to me. But, you know, you're cool too, I guess. But she draws he, pretty pictures. She draws he like, enjoys draws pretty pictures. pictures. Yeah. And so I'm just like, uh, <laughs> after that scene, I didn't like Sigiri even more. And I was like, uh, Elf Yamada, dude. All the way. Yeah, for like the what was like like the two minutes that she appeared in this episode, I was already like, get the fuck out. Yeah, I was like, when <laughs> when Elf showed up at the door, I was like, yes, yes, there's gonna be something good now. <laughs> so, man. <laughs> Anyways, that's my opinion on that whole scene. A <laughs> okay. Kaku, uh, what what do you think about the uh, these couple episodes? Are, are you liking the series or? So I'm 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 enjoying Arrow Manga Sensei. It's a it's a good show. I uh, definitely Elf Yamada Sensei is best girl best hands waifu. down. Oh, at least yeah. we can yeah, all agree for sure. on that. Totally yeah. agreed. I don't I'm not the dissenting opinion in You're this like, one. oh Sigiri, and we're um, like, get the fuck out. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean I've, these last two episodes, um the fan service episode, even though it was a fan service episode, it did delve into like more of the backstory and it fleshed out Elf Yamada a little bit more. Um, her brother's really funny. I love the the tension there, and the <laughs> the understandings from uh, Shido, which is really really funny. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm 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 honestly really enjoying the series as a whole. Yeah, right it's on, brought me right some on. good laughs, I must say. And like I said before, Elf Yamada is definitely like the saving grace for a lot of these things. You mean Emily like, Yamada? Uh, Emily, yeah, Emily. Yeah, he gets that's his true, room. That's yeah. true. Her true name. Ooh, Emily no. and Chris. They couldn't have <laughs> think of more generic, right? <laughs> generic English names. Like, these are these are Western <laughs> names. Let's pick that. <laughs> it's like I, I'm pretty sure in that I have that that book to for like Japanese or whatever. It's like Mary something and then like John Smith. I'm like Jesus Christ. These are the 
whitest names John I've Smith. ever heard. Like these, like you should have just called him John and like Doe. Susan or something. Yeah, Susan and John. It's like Jesus. <laughs> wow. Mm. <laughs> these are the most common names in the world. In the, uh, with this episode, they had a uh, they had a custom ending too. They mm-hmm. did a different ending with it, which is really nice. That was cool to see. I mean, it was, was fan servicey, nice. but I enjoyed it. I mean, it was Elf Yamada, so right. It, it, the more the more I see her, the more I'm like, "When's the Nendroid coming out? When's the Phoenix coming out? Like, let's 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 <laughs> go." You, man, Honestly, let's go. she's the only reason why I think like I'm still watching the show just because I like her character. Mm. Her character, like I would have dropped it otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Well, except for we have to talk. About I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is, <laughs> We're covering if we weren't it, talking so about it. I haven't. I I, it. I like it, but I I like this genre. I mean, that's and I totally also like agree, the abu- I like the abuse. That's part of yeah, it. Yeah, we too, know you like the abuse, dude. <laughs> we we. I all think know. if we weren't covering <laughs> it, I probably wouldn't watch it for a while and then just come back and finish it <clears throat> in like a binge. Yeah, that's fair. And uh, I mean, I I like it better than fucking Masamune's Revenge. Yeah. And that that show that show started off really tight. It was but so it's just good. Like, it started yeah, off really good, and then they were like, "Hey, like Fat Boy's 10 here on that show." Yeah, just, episode ten. Ugh. Ugh. The guy showed up. Hey, I'm Masamune. <laughs> anyway. No, you're not. The guy named Masamune is Masamune. No, what the fuck he didn't is wrong even with say him? that. Oh yeah, he, didn't even <laughs> say that. he just showed up and he's like, "What's up?" And then yeah. she's like, "Oh, Masamune." And he's like, "We're dating. We're dating now." And, she, and he's like, <laughs> "By the way, like, are you Jesus. Masamune?" He's like, "Maybe." <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 12, 12 by the way. way. I'm 12 by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, any final thoughts for these uh, these past couple or anything that we talked about today, boys? I can't wait for it to watch Hero Academy after this. You don't even know, dude. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you talk a little Super like stoked. for a few minutes about that show? Give us a little So rundown. basically it's it's it starts off with a uh, a guy. He um so the society based on like people who have superpowers or quirks. Um and the the character is quirkless. He doesn't have any special powers. Um he just he he's really into superheroes like he writes like notebooks about like all their abilities, all their like their weaknesses, all this stuff. So he's like compiling Stalker. and like really analyzing Check. all the heroes. And he has like, <laughs> but he, uh, he, you know, he goes to school with another dude. He gets bullied because when the kid, his like friend, when he got his quirk, um, he like started bullying him and stuff. And then uh, eventually, like a villain comes and uh, they cap he captures his uh, bully friend or whatever frenemy i guess and <laughs> he's the only guy like in the entire crowd including like superheroes that like rushes the villain even though he doesn't have a quirk and uh the the number one hero all might like sees him do this and he makes him like his apprentice because like his superpower is passed down um from generation to generation it does it's not like you don't inherit when, inherit it when you're born so and then it's just like the whole like cultivating the skill into him and yeah. like um yeah but like when he starts out he can't control it it's all or nothing so like when he he punches you he breaks his arm <laughs> it's just like his arm is destroyed Jeez. because he can't control it right. um and he has to like figure out ways to like work with it and stuff he's getting a lot better in the second season he's like not blowing up parts of his body <laughs> like to do stuff and just being completely worthless so and you get like a lot of rivalries that come out because the second season is mainly just like the tournament within the school, um, and it's it's insane. It's super good. I definitely would say watch. So the it's first like season's worth shonen, watching. Shonen tournament type battle battle manga, or I mean battle anime, I guess, right? Well, the well the first season is um, it's like they're going to school and then like they're in class and then at towards the end of the season there's like a villain encounter. Um, and you like see that flesh out over like three episodes and that's really cool. But then like the, the second season is mainly focusing on the tournament cause it's like a sports festival kind of thing, but they just stretch it out longer Okay. over like the whole season. And then I'm just waiting for the imminent villain attack. It's going to happen. It has to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when we were like looking we'll at, um, <clears throat> shows to cover for, uh, this season, I actually saw that one. I was like, Oh, this looks cool. And then I was like, Oh, it's the second season. Second okay, season. I guess I won't watch it. <laughs> yeah. And so, because uh, I, I just didn't want to binge an entire first season and then try and cover it with people who also weren't watching it. I was like, well, that's pointless. Do so, it. But uh, I might do it now. Do it. You know, 
besides your opinion of uh, Nisekoi waifus, I, you know, your opinion on anime is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on Ori, my dude. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I, I, I haven't watched it. And because He's of not going you know, to watch what I've enough, been hearing, uh, I'm not going to watch it. No. There's not enough tape left, man. There's not enough <laughs> yeah, tape exactly. running out. We're running out. <laughs> Let's not start this. <laughs> no let's not so let's go ahead and move on <laughs> well uh kaku i'll go ahead and have you uh plug your uh, social media and all that good stuff here uh, as we uh, wrap up the show for this week so yeah you can follow me on uh on twitter at kakusho life zero um the zero at the end is the the numeral zero um follow me on twitch at twitch.tv slash kakusho k-a-k-u-s-h-o um, stream Tuesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, um, and Saturdays and Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern. And I'd I'd love to see all of you in my stream. It'd be awesome. We have a great time. If you like talking about anime, anime I am always down to debate waifus. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> he always he likes awesome. him big. Well, <laughs> thanks uh thanks again kaku uh, for joining us uh it was it was a lot of fun i hope you had uh as much fun as we did it's it's been a wonderful time i've really enjoyed it awesome right on right on good um also kind of plugging us uh go ahead and check out our wordpress anime on draft.wordpress.com uh as well as our various other social media links uh and things like that you can find our podcast blogs all that stuff on the uh the wordpress site so check there and it'll kind of direct you wherever you want to find it wherever you want to go um final final thoughts boys uh anything else you wanted to talk about or should we uh wrap it Um, up check out the youtube as well there might be some other content that may not always appear on uh on the uh wordpress so check that out um time to time and you might find some fun random stuff that uh necessarily isn't necessarily related to uh the podcast yeah um i'll probably do something um whether it's a video or whatever i know i haven't really been um covering too much of my other shows i've been super busy but i'll do something soon cool well uh make sure to check out and follow kaku show uh say hi to us uh, in his stream as well as uh, say hi to him and uh hope you enjoyed this episode uh that's it for us uh we'll see you next time bye see you guys and girls Ooh. did we do it we did <laughs> are we done Dad? we did it we did it <laughs>